Hello, I'm Stuart Buck, the ISO 27001 Ninja. And in this video tutorial, you join me as we take a look at ISO 27001, Annex A 5.9, Inventory of Information and Other Associated Assets. So I'm going to show you what this is, what the requirement is. I'm going to give you the tips and the tricks so that you can be ultimately successful when it comes to your ISO 27001 certification. So let's take a deep dive. So let's start off with the definition. The definition of ISO 27001 Annex A 5.9 is an inventory of information and other associated assets, including owners, should be developed and maintained. So what is this saying? This is basically saying that you need asset registers, right? Asset inventory, asset register. And for all of the assets that we have, we need to assign owners uh, and document owners for it. There are a couple of asset inventories and asset registers that you are going to need as part of your ISO 27001 certification. So let's go through the main ones. The first one is a physical asset register. Now, the physical asset register is actually going to include physical assets and virtual assets. This is the asset register of the physical and virtual things that process, store or transmit data that are within your scope and that are within your control. What kind of things have we got in here? So we've got traditional things like servers, desktops, laptops, endpoint user devices, potentially mobile phones. Um, so these are the physical assets that, that you have and that you can touch. Things that are network related. It may be that we have wireless access points. You know, we may have routers and bridges and the old fashioned network technology. So anything that is physical is going to go into our physical asset register. In addition to that, we're going to have our virtual assets. Yes, virtual assets is in. If we have virtual assets that are static, we're going to have those within our asset inventory. But we also acknowledge the fact that virtual assets may be quite dynamic in the way that they're created and used and disposed and the speed at which they are um, created uh, and used and disposed. So in that instance, we're going to have a asset inventory for our uh, virtual assets. And we're going to have the ability to show our dynamic virtual assets in real time. Sidebar. For virtual assets, when it comes to the asset inventory, the concept of them is that, yes, they will still be applied to uh, an owner. They will be still given an owner. The things that the auditor is going to look for in the dynamic virtual assets are things like the build documents, right? What are the standards and the build documentation around the creation of those virtual assets? How have you gone about is securing and locking down that virtual asset? Have you applied things like the encryption, uh, all of the other Annex A controls that are applicable? Have you applied them? So yes, your encryption, yes, your uh, anti-malware, your antivirus, things like your patching. So it's going to be slightly different when they when they look at the virtual assets that are dynamic. But taking that step back to a, um, a physical asset register, we're going to have that register of those assets. The next asset register and asset inventory we're going to have is our data inventory. This is something that as part of either GDPR or other data protection regulation, you are going to be obliged to have uh, definitely in relation to personal data, but now you're going to expand that out to other in scope data. So you're going to have your data asset register. Things that are in there are things like, you know, whereabouts uh, your customer data is, things like potentially uh, things like your CRM, your finance, your marketing, your employee data. Some of those aspects may not be in scope, but you're still going to have that asset register of those. The other inventory that we're going to have is we're going to have software licensing. Now, software licensing really comes under intellectual property that was introduced in the 2022 version um, of the ISO 27001 standard. It talks about intellectual property, but actually it references software licensing. So the way that we're going to get around that tackling two things with one control is we are going to have a software license inventory. Um, and we'll come on to that when we get to intellectual property. So reach out to that uh, particular control if you want more information on it. But three primary asset inventories, all with the assets assigned to owners being physical and virtual assets, data assets and software license assets. 
You can, when it comes to implementation, either use templates that are provided by the high table ISO 27001 store. It shouldn't come of any surprise to you to know that I've provided you with templates that make this job easier. But if you already have something in place in terms of asset management, then reuse that. Just make sure that there are certain control points within it that you are being able to show the assignment of owners, for example, and you're gonna be absolutely golden. What are the mistakes that people make when it comes to asset inventories? The number one is not having all the assets in the inventory, right? We cannot control what we don't know. So this is one of our starting points, one of our building blocks when it comes to information security is we need to know what we've got so that we then can control it and protect it and put in place all those tenants around confidentiality, integrity and availability. So that's the biggest mistake. What I would say as a sidebar here is that an auditor can only audit what you show them. So if it is the case that certain assets aren't within your asset register and at no point do they come across them as part of their audit, then they're not going to know about it because they don't know what they don't know. So you're kind of going to be okay, I guess. I'm not going to say that you should not put assets in there. I'm just saying don't overthink it, don't over egg it, don't overspend too much time on it. As long as you've got your primary assets for your in-scope products and services, then again, you're going to be absolutely golden. What else do we see in there? We see um, that asset management as a mistake, um, asset management as a process isn't being implemented and as a result of that, the asset registers are not being up to date. So these asset inventories, these asset registers are going to be you know, living documents really. So if you have uh, assets that go through their life cycle, it could be data, it could be a physical asset all the way through to destruction, but you're never updating your register, you're not showing within your uh, asset inventories those assets that were disposed of and evidences that we, they were disposed of securely, uh, then that can be a mistake. Um, and another mistake is assigning uh, assets in an asset inventory to people that are no longer in the organization. We see that a lot. Um, so as part of your start a leave a mover process, when people leave the organization, um, assets don't get updated and they're still allocated to people who are no longer here. Uh, as part of the mover process, when people move around the organization and assets are moved around the organization, again, asset registers are not kept up to date. So a couple of things there to go through on asset uh, inventories. But the ISO 27001 toolkit, the ultimate toolkit for ISO 27001 certification includes all of the templates that you need to be effective, right? Um, so be sure to go along there or individual templates are available and downloadable. So there is a blog, as I say, detailed blog that goes along with this particular video. Be sure to check that out for the most latest information. But as long as you have asset inventories, as long as those asset inventories have ownership allocated within them, then for this particular control, you're gonna be absolutely golden. My name is Stuart Barker. I am the ISO 27001 Ninja, and until the next tutorial, peace out.